Okay, look, I know it takes a bunch of studios to get these prestige films made, and you want to make sure everyone gets credit, but 59 seconds of opening logos? That is entirely too many seconds of logos. Reading. Also inquisitive reading. I'm watching a movie, goddammit. I don't need to be questioned. Welcome to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Man, this isn't Jeopardy. This is a very specific program that was super popular in the early 2000s and was originally hosted by Regis Philbin back when he was alive. And it makes this movie dated as hell. Oh, so you're the one who calls me up every single day of my life with special offers, huh? Game show host humor. It's hot. And my wife is giving me hell. Man, this movie Dutch Angle so hard it may as well be an Aerosmith video. And I've got a desk full of murderers, rapists, extortionists, bum bandits, and you. So maybe concentrate more on them and less on torturing Charles Van Doren Jr. here. Also, the original title of this film was Quiz Show for Sadists. What the hell can a slum dog possibly know? Is it close enough? Yes, I'm being told this is close enough for a roll credits. Congratulations. Also, this entire premise is based on a hunch that this kid can't know enough to win the show. And I understand there's a whole derogatory cast system and all that, but it's also a flimsy-ass premise. Jesus, what a dizzying amount of cuts. What the hell, Danny Boyle? You were the chosen one! God damn, this sequence is so shouty, I briefly thought it was directed by Richard Donner. Okay, maybe the security folks are just trying to scare the kids and run them off the land, but it still doesn't explain how these f***ing children are outrunning the motherfuckers who are on motorized scooters. How the sh did the kids plan this coordinated attack on the security personnel? They were literally just playing cricket and are currently being pursued, so where did these little assholes come from? This isn't like the Battle of Endor when you've got time to plan all this sh is there seriously one cop chasing them now? What's he planning to do? Carry all eight of these kids to swift justice by himself? Okay, look, I'm probably being too hard on this chase scene, but it's also a lie and pissing me off. Look how f***ing far ahead of that dickhole they are here. There's no way he's keeping up with them, even around the next turn. That's right, movie just made a scene transition by going straight through this poor woman's butthole. Atos! Man, I thought a movie that murdered the Oscars and is only a little over 10 years old would hold up a lot better than this. The man who knows all the answers. Talk. Oh, so they get talk. Weren't they just torturing the shit out of Jamal, though? And he didn't say anything then, right? Is he going to be more forthcoming with a light tap on the head while sitting at the desk? Are you ready for the first question for 1,000 rupees? Wow, they've got this recording queued up to be perfectly correlated to the script. Jamal, get out of here. Prakash is going to go. I didn't think an Oscar contender could have this much poop-related plot ever again, but then the hell comes around in a few years to prove me wrong. No, 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 hell no, 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 to all of this. Instead, 40 extra cents. What a weird scene, and a ridiculous reason for Jamal to know the answer to the first question. Why is Amitav visiting the slum anyway? Nobody but Jamal can even get near him, and he arrives by helicopter? The hell? And there actually may be a good answer for this in the previous script version, or the book, but you know what we say around here about the books. So the police are keeping all these people back from Amitab, but they allow a soaked child through, and once he gets through, he's got all this time to ask for the autograph without any interference? And this actor dude is clearly a saint, as he didn't even question the sight of this poor child. Religion. Interesting. I haven't been to India, but is it common for TV hosts there to openly antagonize their contestants? I'm not talking about Steve Harvey giving you the exaggerated side eye for a the answer on the feud, Prem is being a supreme dick to Jamal this whole time. I swear to God, at least 82% of this movie is running. They may as well have cast Tom Cruise. You know, there are a couple of longest shots of them running away from the riots, but rather than appreciate them, I'm reminded about the rest of the sequence that's cut up more than a f***ing Marvel fight scene. You just won 16,000 rupees! I know this question led Jamal to think about his mom, so he's understandably upset, but the rest of the times he answers, he looks just as depressed. So I'm wondering if his heart's even really into it. This show is f***ing awful, by the way. I mentioned what an asshole Prem is, but between that and the morose motherfucker right here, would anyone dig this sh If I would you ever take the money and run, you're not gonna get the next one. Even if this is something game show hosts do on commercial breaks, Prem is still mic'd up, right? There's no way the producers killed his volume that quickly. As if this movie is not depressing enough, let's cut to the poor child in the middle of a monsoon. Wait, that's not sad enough for you? <sighs> okay, bring in the puppies. <laughs> Wouldn't she be more likely to alert security standing in the middle of a lot? Hello. Great, child abduction in the middle of a trash dump, so the movie can get even more depressing. I'm trying to think if I've seen a more obvious villain that's introduced as a possible good guy. Maybe Pennywise? Yeah, I think that's about it. <laughs> Holy sh Salim rose fast in this organization, along with fighting with Panus. Did he also shank the biggest kid in the camp the first night? Jesus Christ, this is so deep of a Dutch angle, it's practically Belgium. 
Chili's on his willy was coincidentally the name of my crossover thrash steampunk band in college. Tayari. Ah. Ambi tayari. Hey, me too. Wait, are we all talking about the movie being over? Because I'm way the f ready for that. Opa Mumba style. <laughs> Thank God. It'd been like 15 minutes since the last running scene. And you know how much I like my running. <laughs> Jesus, this score has its moments, but here it sounds like we've wandered into an episode of Castle. <laughs> I guess it's a trade-off between not screaming your whereabouts to your pursuers and motivation to your companion, but I think I'll go with the former. Convenient escape train is escape train. Surdas, guess what? Right! Man, at least in the other flashbacks, we've seen how Jamal knew the answers. But for this one, it's completely overlooked. Sure, he sings the song for the asshole kidnapper guy, but there's no mention of the name of the songwriter. Millionaire montage! It's at this point in the movie that M.I.A.'s Paper Planes is playing. And I could not be more shocked that it took so long for that to happen. I could have sworn after the first time I saw this that the song played the entire movie. Kind of like Paul Westerberg's dyslexic heart in singles. No one will be seated during the goofy train exploits of Jamal and Salim portion of the movie. Of course, the somewhat happy section of the movie has to end somewhat tragically. Don't want you to feel joy for more than, oh, say, more than six consecutive minutes. Is this heaven? I guess it must be, considering that they're looking back at where the train tracks were. And if that's the case, they should be either dead or looking directly into the super steep hill from which they just rolled. Cool transition, I guess. They look like they were still kids before they fell, but the tumble down the hill aged them several years forward? Look, I respect the hustle, but I'm gonna give the Taj Mahal security a big ol' sin for letting these kids take over the guided tour more than once. Hey, I just sinned the Taj Mahal! <laughs> look at me! I made it! You wanted to see a bit of real India? Yeah, it is! <laughs> well... Here is a bit of the real America, son. I almost want this to be a parody of some dumbass rich white American couple, but the more I think about it, the more this looks like a perfect depiction of some dumbass rich white American couple. And I'm not even gonna add or subtract us in here. I just wanted to point that out. This reminds me of a book I once read called Under the Bleachers. It was written by Seymour Butts. I'll be here all week. <laughs> I see Jamal's come down with a classic Orpheus complex. Who's on a thousand rupee note? I don't know. So Jamal can remember the one time his buddy told him who was on the $100 bill, but he's never looked at a thousand rupee before? That had to have been more frequently in his possession, right? I know movies try to say that the unusual nature of the situation is what made Jamal remember Benjamin Franklin, but it also presupposes he's got somewhat of a photographic memory, so this is some bull right here. Benjamin Franklin, up to the... Whoa, not only does Jamal's old buddy from the orphanage from hell immediately know who's on the American $100 bill, he also immediately recognizes Jamal? This is the amazing kid we should be following, right? Get him on the show. In order to track down Latika, Jamal is assisted by the most helpful prostitutes this side of a Law & Order episode. You really thought you could just walk in and take my prize away? Yeah, I had some reservations about that plan too. Evil kidnapping child abusing asshole. I would say you'd be excellent at cinema sins, but even we are evil kidnapping child abusing assholes. Who invented the revolver? Okay, even if I buy that Jamal's experienced these answers before, I'm not buying that they're asked in a perfect sequence to line up with his life's events. Also, I'm calling bullshit on James Revolver being an option on a question worth 2.5 million rupees. That's a 300 rupee option at best. Had anyone behind this film ever seen Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Did you really kill him? Good. And this is all it takes to convince Javid? Some rando tween with a handgun shows up to a balcony casino and he's all, this kid totally checks out. I am number one now. At what point has Salim not been number one? Sure, Jamal convinced him to come back to Mumbai, but it's not like he gave up his alpha dog status to tag along. Movie's just inventing new ways to show us what an asshole he is. And we get it already. You need the exercise. Go and get me something to eat. Yes, sir. Maybe don't insult the man you're putting in charge of getting the food, especially when you don't even tell him what you want. No filming. <laughs> what? Is he really talking to the film crew? And they left that in? Why? So if it's currently a little past eight in the morning in London, then it should be three o'clock in New York and not 10, like the clock show here. Also, it should be 12 o'clock in Los Angeles and not nine o'clock, as this clock shows. These clocks are the biggest lie of this movie. Hey, Jamal. Hey, it's Indian Martin Starr. Where are you from? Lock, big, lock, Ben. Lock Big Ben! Is this scene meant to show us how Jamal is able to Kaiser Soze a story together? Because if so, this doesn't inspire any confidence in his talent. Cyberstalking. Hello. We interrupt this slumdog millionaire movie to bring you a very special episode of 24. Jamal? Holy sh man, it's been how many years? I know these guys are brothers and all, and there's probably a magical ability to recognize their voices in context, but this is a completely random call from a f***ing cell phone service. This isn't just magical. This is next level Harry Potter raises the dead parents from the grave I'll go for D, London. Computer G, D, Lockyer. 
But Jamal never said final answer. Seriously, did no one watch the f***ing game show that is the center of this movie's storyline? Jamal? <laughs> is there a question now? Earlier, Salim went into this whole soliloquy from hearing dude's voice, but now he's got a check? You need to go now. Take my card. Hey, look at that. Mumbai has actual card-carrying criminals. You think I'm gonna let you out of my sights again, huh? You stay with me now, younger brother. Referring to a sibling as that sibling to the sibling cliche. Ah, sudden immediately conspicuous Latika. Seriously, did Jamal know that Salim was coming to her? He's literally risking his and his brother's life just to see what's up with Javid. There's nothing about any cook. There is a dishwasher being delivered. I'm your dishwasher. This works. Boz Lerman's William Shakespeare's Jamal plus Latika. Shut up! The cricket is on. Cricket. Salim will help us. You still believe in Salim? Hey, Latika would definitely be excellent at Cinema Sins, and we'd be happy to have her. Man, I haven't seen someone this mad at a sporting event since Chris threw his wallet at his TV and broke that mother during a Nashville Predators game. Latika! Latika! You mean Latika was able to evade these assholes all the way to the train station, but they're just now catching up? Jesus, if she'd spent less time sexually staring, she'd be off and running with Jamal by now. The guy from the slums becomes a millionaire overnight. You know who's the only other person who's done that? Me. This is very close to a villainous exposition soon, but I guess Prem's not supposed to really be a villain, right? I don't know. I feel like everyone in this f***ing movie is all kinds of evil. B. Ricky Ponting or D. Jack Hobbs? D. Ah, yes. In addition to having a conveniently photographic memory, Jamal also has a world-class ability to call out a high-stakes bluff. Seriously, just give this character actual superpowers at this point. This is uh, bizarrely plausible. Yep. That's about as high of a praise as I'd give this movie, too. Go. Just drive. There won't be another chance. So now Salim is a good guy? I can't figure out if this movie is more wishy-washy with its characters or its plot. 40 straight seconds of hot traffic action. Jesus, good thing Salim didn't have his voicemail set up, or there'd be no way Latika makes it back to the phone in time. Movie timing, am I right? The audience and the staff are just sitting around while the phone rings for, I don't know, maybe 30, 35 minutes of real time. All numbers are approximate. You really are on your own now, Jamal. Your final answer for 20 million rupees. Or he could still walk. You can choose to take the money after using a lifeline, which this movie clearly doesn't understand. Hey. This works. Hey man, good for Jamal and everything, but this ending to the show is about as plausible as the Jai Ho sequence happening in reality. Considering everyone knows who Jamal is now and he literally just became a millionaire, I'm calling bull that he would be able to have a peaceful moment to himself at the train station. Phew, thank God we got a chance to cram in one last crooked-ass Dutch angle. Seriously, I'm gonna need a f***ing chiropractor after watching this movie. Yes, but how the f*** did he get on the game show? That question was asked earlier, but never f***ing answered, and it seems like a pretty f***ing important question for the movie to answer. Gino! You're a gambling man. Let's say we flip for it. He's a freak. He's a fast killer. He's a fast killer. Spicy. All of the park rangers here at Alcatraz were at one time guards, myself included. My name is John Johnson, but everyone here calls me Vicky. Will you please follow me? Did you really kill him? The enemy of my enemy is my enemy. Look, tense, Claire. The key to a happy life is to accept you are never actually in control. A shit demon! Is this heaven? No, it's Iowa. Time for a commercial break. Don't go away now. Nah. <laughs> parkour, parkour! Parkour, parkour! parkour!